Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And if you're familiar with this channel at all, you probably know that I'm really into synthesizer circuits. A couple of years ago, the company Sound Semiconductor released the SSI 2130, a voltage controlled oscillator chip. Unfortunately, it is in this really annoying surface mount package, but it might be worth dealing with because it does look like it has a lot of really cool features. If you have used this chip, I would like to know what you think about it, so please leave a comment with your thoughts below. Apparently it was used in the Take 5 synthesizer. If you know of any other mainstream polyphonic synthesizers it's been used in, let me know. I learned that the Bufaco Pony VCO uses the SSI 2130, and something that caught my eye when looking over the website is that the Pony contains a wave folder. And that's actually the main topic of this video because the web page includes the schematics. If we take a look at the wave folder in the Pony, you'll see it has two wave folding stages in series. Let's focus on the one on the right first. It's a bit easier to see what's going on if I take this diode D7 and this plus five voltage source and flip it upside down so that you'll see the two diodes in parallel. It's then evident that it's a Serge style wave multiplier. The original Serge wave multiplier has six wave folding stages, whereas the Bifaco only has two. But the Bifaco has another trick up its sleeve. The original Serge wave multiplier controlled the wave folding effect by controlling the amplitude of the signal going in, here implemented using an OTA based voltage controlled amplifier. In contrast, the Bifaco Pony keeps the amplitude of the signal going into the first stage the same. What it does to get variation is that it changes the voltage on the other side of the diodes of the first stage. The second stage has fixed thresholds at which the voltage will start folding, namely a diode drop away from plus 5 and minus 5 volts. So that's probably something like 4.3 and minus 4.3 volts. The thresholds for the first stage are set by these op amps here. And notice this op amp on the right here is an inverting stage. So the voltage at the bottom of D9 here is going to be the negative of the voltage at the bottom of D8. And we can see how those wave folding stages are different in this little video on the Bifaco website. When the first wave folding effect kicks in, you can see that the peak of the wave is dropping. So that's the effect of changing the voltage at those diodes for that first stage. But when the second stage kicks in, we see that the top there stays at the same point. It doesn't change in the same way. So there's no rule here when it comes to making wave folding effects. It's not like one approach is better than the other. They'll all have their own unique different sound. Okay, let's listen to it. I have a lecture here on YouTube analyzing the Serge wave folder stage in more detail that I would invite you to check out, as well as a couple of lectures on Buchla's timbre circuitry that achieves a similar effect using a very different circuit.